Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Ask Us Anything, also known as AWUA, where we gather all of your questions from the internet and answer them. In today's episode, what's the best smartphone without bloatware that is priced under 1,000 ringgit? And also, why should you get the iPad Air or the iPad Pro if the regular iPad is powerful enough? All of this and more on today's episode, so let's get into it! Alright, so the first question we have Ariel, they ask, maybe the A52s would still be a good option. So first, let's talk about the specs of the Samsung Galaxy A52s. Alright, so this device comes with a 6.5 inch Full HD Plus Super AMOLED display that comes with a 120Hz refresh rate, a Snapdragon 778G 5G processor that's mated to 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. And fun fact, this is also the same processor as the new Samsung Galaxy A73. Besides that, this device also comes with a quad camera setup and also a 4500mAh battery with 25W fast charging. In comparison to the Samsung Galaxy A53 that was launched earlier, this device gets a similar 6.5 inch Full HD Plus Super AMOLED display with a 120Hz refresh rate. Powering the device is an Exynos 1280 processor with up to 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage. Besides that, it also gets a quad camera setup and also a larger 5000mAh battery with support for 25W fast charging. To be honest, the differences between the two smartphones is actually minimal and the prices are somewhat similar. You can find the Samsung Galaxy A52 as 5G at 1,699 ringgit, while the Samsung Galaxy A53 is priced at 1,849 ringgit. So if you prefer a Snapdragon powered smartphone and you want to save a little bit of money, yeah, the Samsung Galaxy A52 as 5G is definitely a better choice. Alright, so moving on, we have James Young. He asks, the regular iPad is such a powerhouse, I recommended it. I've been using the iPad 8 for more than a year and it is still flying. I don't understand why the other upper range iPads are so expensive or how I would ever justify a more powerful one. Yes, I play games on the iPad. Hey James, yes, I agree that the regular iPad is really powerful and whenever my friend asks me what kind of tablet they should get right, I would definitely suggest the regular iPad instead of the iPad mini or the iPad Air. It is super affordable and it can do almost everything the iPad Air or the iPad Pro can. But I also do understand why people want to get the more expensive iPad instead of the regular ones. I have to admit that the screen on the regular iPad is not as good as the one on the iPad Air or the iPad Pros. The bezels are way thinner which looks really good and if you're someone who draws often on your iPad, you will also appreciate the extra screen. And speaking of drawing, the regular iPad only supports first generation Apple Pencil and do you know how stupid it is to charge the first gen Apple Pencil? Like hello, you have to stick it into the charging port of your iPad which is ridiculous. But if you do own the second generation Apple Pencil, you know how convenient it is to charge the pencil. All you have to do is to place your pencil on top of the iPad and it will stick magnetically. Oh and not forgetting that the iPad Air and Pros also have better stereo experience because they have speakers on both sides in landscape mode. But let me know what you think. Alright and moving on, we have the third question from Lao YC. They ask, looking recommended for laptop brand and model, specs, CPU, AMD, Ryzen or better, GPU, GeForce, long battery life, 5 to 6 hours, for IT use, programming, software development, web design, etc. Budget 6,000 ringgit, other specs like screen size, audio are not important. Thanks. Alright, so Raymond, our laptop expert here at soyachinchao.com recommended you to get the Acer Swift X. According to him, this laptop is not the most powerful or the most portable laptop. The laptop is also not very stylish and the display is not as good as you want it to be. But what's good about this laptop is the performance to price ratio. In terms of pricing, the Acer Swift X that comes with an AMD Ryzen 5 5600U with RTX 3050 Ti that comes with 8GB of RAM and 512GB of SSD storage is priced at 4299 ringgit. Meanwhile, the high spec variant that comes with an AMD Ryzen 7 5800U with RTX 3050 Ti that comes with 16GB of RAM and 512GB of SSD is priced at 4999 ringgit. If you want to know more about this laptop, you can definitely check out Raymond's review and I'll put the link down in the description box below. But if you're not in a rush to get it yet, Raymond suggests you to wait it out because the next generation Acer Swift X will be coming out really soon. Alright, last but not least, we have Abdullah Ba. He asks, Thanks for the video. Yes, too many new phones have come out all at once. Can't keep up. What's a good phone for under 1000 ringgit that doesn't have a lot of bloatware that keeps running in the background and suck the juice out of your battery? 
So this question right, I asked around the office and Alex suggests that the best stock Android smartphone that is priced under 1,000 ringgit is the Motorola G51 5G. Yes, it comes with 5G. This smartphone is priced at 899 ringgit and it comes with a huge 6.81 inch Full HD Plus display that comes with 120Hz refresh rate. It also gets a triple camera setup and also a rather decent 5000mAh battery. But if you really want the best performance for your money, the POCO F3 will be offered for as low as 999 ringgit during the Lazada 10th birthday sale on 27 of March. This smartphone has a Snapdragon 870 processor with 5G, an AMOLED screen with 120Hz refresh rate and also stereo speakers. Alright, so that's it from me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like our video if you liked it and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and also click on the notification bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!